Hi, this is your little video boost for, what is today, Monday, July the 19th. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show is I'm going to review again what endo and exo mean in a deals alder reaction. Okay, so um, the way it's defined, okay, let's just do it this way. There are outer positions and there are inner positions on the dying. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. You have to tell me when it's nine minutes. The dienophile has some kind of substituents on it. Okay? The way the endo product is defined, it can be defined two ways. The endo product in a Diels Alder can be defined as the inner positions being trans on the new ring with respect to the R groups. Okay? Now again, exo and endo have to do with the positioning of these groups compared to the positioning of those groups. Or, you can define it in terms of the positioning of these groups with respect to those groups, okay? The other way endo is defined is as the outer groups of the diene, I'm talking about the diene, can you read that? Mm -hmm. Being cis with respect to the R groups. And I'm just calling the R groups, I'm just calling the groups on the dienophile the R groups. Okay, so if you were doing this reaction and you wanted to draw the endo and the endo is favored because of pi stacking interactions, if you wanted to draw it, you would draw your normal six-membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. You would draw your Diels Alder ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we know these two positions are cis with respect to each other on the new ring. These are cis with respect to each other on the new ring. These are cis with respect to each other on the new ring. But endo is about how these are oriented with respect to these or respect to those. So how do I follow this? I want the inner groups to be trans to these groups. So I'm going to go inner hash. It doesn't matter. You could start with them as wedges. It doesn't matter. I could make those two wedges. But if I'm really drawing the endo, then the inner groups will be trans with respect to these groups. That means I'm going to make the R groups both wedges. We know they're both going to be wedges because there's cis on here. The outer groups, the other way to define it, which is exactly the same thing, the outer groups have to be cis with respect to the R groups. So I'm just going to fill them in. Okay? That is endo, which is the major product. How would you draw exo? It would be the opposite of this, okay? So showing this in action, okay, I'm erasing this, hope you have it down. Okay, showing the opposite of this, I mean, showing a real, real version of it. If you had groups here and here, plus, say, this famous dienophile that you used in the laboratory, okay? If you wanted to draw endo, okay, you would have to have the inner positions, which in this case are hydrogens, trans with respect to those groups. You would want the outer groups to be cis with respect to those groups. So, one way I could draw the product, this is not a chiral product, I'm going to use my numbering system, one, two, three, four, five, six. One way to draw this 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to do it the other way. Okay, so supposing I put the methyls back. These are the outer positions. I want to put the outer position cis with respect to this. So let me move my numbers a little bit here. Six, five. All I'm trying to do is draw endo, okay? The other way to do it is to have these two hydrogens be cis, I mean be trans, with respect to those groups. That's endo, okay? Now what you guys are used to, you're used to having these kind of ring systems like this, okay? You're used to working with the inner position. So the way I defined it in class was if you had this kind of structure, the way you would draw endo is, like so, you draw the bridge. So say you draw the bridge as a wedge, you have to draw the dienophile substituents as hashes. This puts the inner positions trans with respect to those groups. Realize the outer positions here are occupied by hydrogens. Those hydrogens in this drawing would be wedges. Okay? So all, everything I've drawn in this little exercise is endo. Okay, endo. These are not chiral. So I could have just as easily made these wedges and that wedges. That would be the same compound. Okay? So the next little video boost is going to be about electrophilic aromatic substitution. So thanks, and I'll see you in class.